Thank you. Thank you. So, in the interest of time, what we wanted to do is give you all a chance to react and respond. And I'm actually going to run around with this microphone, so shoot your hand up in the air. We want to hear what you see the future is, reactions to what you've heard, what you think might be standing in the way of these mostly hopeful thoughts about what we can be. So let's see some hands. Big open space. I'm going to have to pick on someone. You're first. Um, first, thanks so much. It was great to have the future, and um, especially you, Lydia. Um, oh, I'm Jim Lasko. I'm from Chicago. I work with Red Moon Theater. Um, I guess for me, the future, I'm hoping that, that this, um, that, you know, it's a strange thing, right? In the theater, we have one word for the space, and it's the exact same word. We use it for the same thing that we do. We make theater. Um, and I would really um, am hoping that we begin to dissolve that. Uh, or we, we come up with new words, because the theater as the threshold through which we have to enter in order to see theater is, it seems to me, one of the main issues that um, we're not addressing as, 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 a, as a group of people. Um, theater, the practice, doesn't have to happen in a theater. And uh, the fact that we have to go through doors and pay ticket, um, pay for tickets and make plans in advance and feel, create this kind of precious insulated community in which this interaction occurs seems to me to be one of the uh, major obstacles. And so for the future, I'm hoping that we can have theater without theater. Thank you. I think a few of you at least would agree. So we'll move on. Did you have something? Yeah. Um, Hi, I'm Mark Shugal. I'm the, I'm the media past chair of the Arena Stage Board, and again, welcome to uh, Arena Stage. This is a scary thought. In the future, there'll be a new Arena Stage building. Sometime in the future, right? Um, so here's my question. I, 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 I'm, I'm not a maker of art in the traditional sense. I'm a board member here. I'm an audience member, and I'm a lover of what many of you um, in the room do. You brought great joy and great challenge to the way I think in your work. But I look at the numbers of people that attend this art form, theater, and if you believe the numbers, 85% of people are approximately in America don't come to the theater, presumably because it doesn't speak to them, it doesn't engage them in some way. And so my question, I'm having a little trouble formulating the exact question, but I'd like to ask, you as creators of art, um, what you feel your responsibility is in that uh, and in growing interest in theater and broadening the audi audience and whether you think those are things that can happen in the future. At, at the time Arena Stage was started, as we, we learned earlier today. It was in a tiny space, and it found an audience, and it grew. And from that growth came the regional theater movement, arguably, and, and a whole lot of support from a whole lot of people all over the country. That support mushroomed and grew over, what, the last five decades, to a point where, at some time in the not too recent past, and you, you might know the answer to this as well as anyone, given what you do uh, um, in research. At some point in the not too distant past, we reached a peak of performance attendance nationally. I think TCG has documented this. So when, when I hear people wringing their hands over the decline of the audience, I think it's useful to see it in that context, that it may not be dying, it may be dipping, it might be dying, we don't know. But it, it has gone down, and there certainly are capacity questions. There's another thing that, that Mark, I know you know uh, from asking questions in research. It depends on how the question is asked. Because you ask my daughter if she goes to play. She does because, you know, I'm her dad. But 
a lot of things that she goes to see, she doesn't define as theater. Some of the things that you were talking about aren't defined as theater, so the, the questions may not be getting accurate answers. I wonder about that. Um, if you look at the membership of TCG, for example, it, it's at an all-time high. There is, there is a movement that is happening, and it may be contracting, we don't know by how much. And, and I have this to say about the 4% or whatever the percentage is uh, of, of people who go to the theater. It's probably always been true, historically, that that was the case. You know, I, I don't know what the peak of, of theater going in a population was historically throughout time. But I guess my instinct tells me that it's, it's never been a whole lot higher than that, just because of the way people live their lives, through access, through, you know, there are all sorts of things that, that have driven that through history. So my only point really is let's look at it in a relative term and let's continue to drive towards participation. Um, and, you know, and we, you were talking about, or they were talking about earlier today about all the MFA programs you teach in, in an MFA program? No. No, in no, a BA I program. Teach BA. Mark, so, Mark yes. this is the voice from here. Can you stand up? Can I stand yeah, up? Yeah, I'm disrupting your thought, but if you could stand up, it would help everyone who's not here okay. to also be able to see in here. I can stand up, but I have to untie the mic. There we go. Thank you. Now I, I, don't, now I don't know what to say. <laughs> what? Sorry about that. Um, Oh, we were talking about MFA programs. Well, you know, there's, there's another argument to be made that, you know, people participate, people go to the theater who have participated in the theater, and that this mushrooming of MFA programs and of training programs around the country may actually be building audiences for the future. That's possible, too. So, it, my, really, my only point, Mark, is it's relative, and maybe we shouldn't panic. We should pay attention to it, but it may not be going away. I want to add to this. I also think, sort of back to what I was talking about, about diversity and the glass killing me, um, I think that there are huge populations of people who don't get counted, who go to theaters that don't get counted or funded. And, um, and so, you know, part of that thing I was talking about, about acknowledging our own elitism, and I, I, um, I implicate myself both because I, I should be and also because it's to disarm you. Um, <laughs> I, I just think it's really important that we continue to broaden our sense of what a legitimate audience is and what a legitimate play is and maybe learn from some of those audiences that are, are, are coming out in droves to things that we sometimes discredit. Great, thank you. We have time for one more. <coughs> Sorry, stand up. I'm very old. Uh, <laughs> my legs are not wanting to, okay. Uh, I'm Jennifer Nelson. I'm here. I'm a local person. Um, and, and two things that, that I wanted to respond to about the issue of, of theater in the future. Um, one, it's been a little bit touched on, is that I think people will redefine what performance is as reality. And particularly because we've got a generation of people who are growing up living in a world of, of technological worlds, <laughs> living in technologically created worlds, where they feel they are more real than they are in the physical world, you know. Um, that it feels more real for a teenager to exist in a world in which they can manipulate the, you know, what they see and what they think and who they meet than they do in school, where they're you know, shuffled around like they're chess pieces or not even as valuable as chess pieces. So that the, the movement that's represented, represented by things like reality TV, I think, will become more attractive so, and we're already seeing this more and more, not that it's a new thing, but it's, it's certainly proliferating. Things like events happening in somebody's apartment. And you go and have dinner in their apartment, and that's the theater. You know, so the, I think that we're gonna see more and more of that, of people just w wanting to have the experience of living in the not, in the, I don't even wanna call it the real world, because, but, but living in the physical world 
as a performance event, you know, redefined. And the other thing is a, a phenomenon that, that uh, I can give an example of, of something that happened in Washington last year that is relevant particularly to the, what we call the diverse community, and um, it, it, which was a black theater festival that happened here that did quite well. I think it was a long festival of lots of different events, and none of them had anything to do with the theater community of Washington. It was church ministries and community groups and you know, a whole lot of other things. I don't even know who these people were. And people would ask me, because I've been working in theater here for a long time, and you know, and they think, oh, well, you're black, you should know. Um, that, you know, people ask me, well, aren't you involved in it? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't know anything about it. Nobody, you know, nobody's called you. It's like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> and that, so what, what it was an example of to me was how a lot of people who enjoy performance, who want to perform themselves, don't care about, you know, the theater, the theater community. What they want to do is create their own events that talk about what they want to talk about, you know, like a lot of church ministry, I'm, I'm personally not, don't go there in that, you know, and I don't particularly want anybody doing, you know, I don't want to see plays about Jesus and being redeemed. And, but a lot of people want to see that. They want to participate in it. They want to be touched by it. They want to get up and sing and they want to, you know, et cetera. So that's one of the things that I think is going to happen more and more is that the, what we consider ourselves to be the theater community is just going to be bypassed by people who have been on the outside for a long time and have not found a way in and have given up on it and say, or saying, well, we can do our own and by younger generations who will be seeking different experiences as performance. The end. Thank you. On that note, beautiful, big, wide open space. We're going to take a 10 minute break and then we're back in this room and get just one last big round of applause for the big thinkers. <laughs> <laughs>